my current work uh, is mainly in the field of video art and that involves also performance um, and photography as the main sort of mediums that I use. I haven't sort of over academicized the way I work at all. Like I never try and um, ask myself why, very often why I'm doing it. Sometimes in the middle of work, making a video, I do think, like particularly the performance part of it, I think, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? I don't know what the hell. I'm by myself in a room with playing with costumes, um, and it's not 100% enjoyable either. Like, there's a lot of sort of pain just in the physical act of dressing up um, and being under these really hot lights that I use. And I enjoy using the hot lights because it adds a bit of that that pain to the, um, the outcome which makes it seem more real and more useful because I'm going through an, a, some sort of discomfort. I'm really interested in people that I meet, uh, even if briefly, that kind of sort of rub against what a normal, the way a normal person acts in society. A lot of people are surprised if they've seen my work before they meet me that I'm not a, a crazy um, person jumping off the walls and getting in their face and being obnoxious and um, sort of stuck in a, a loop like the characters in the videos that I make are. I definitely want to have a line between myself, Heath, you know, and the figures in the videos, figures, characters, whatever you want to call them, materials, because that's the way I see it. When I'm working on, on the videos, looking at the screen, I'll describe any of the, the characters as him, you know, or it, or that, you know, not, not me. I don't even think about it as myself at all, which is kind of, um, I, I guess, interesting, but I feel very detached from myself. But obviously, it's myself making the videos. It's me choosing to do that, so I'm not being directed by anyone else. I felt a strange urge to do it, so it is me but I don't act like that. I, lo I would love to think that a lot of the stuff I do is experimental, but if I feel that with each new work, I'm sort of fighting against m uh, this routine that I've developed of production, which I feel is kind of um, counterintuitive to what I want to do when I make a work, which is to experiment and to play around and to sort of just throw things together and see what eventuates and the joy that can come from that, you know, the surprises that you, that you have. I, I guess there is a structure to the way I work that within you can improvise. So I'll probably, fair, to put it more fairly, say that I'm, I improvise more than I experiment in the way that, you know, a guy playing, uh, you know, a, a band can play a, a blues riff and improvise within that. So. I've got this structure that I work with and I improvise with it, okay. And at every stage I improvise. I create very quick costumes from, usually from pieces of clothing I find at op shops, costume stores, $2 shops, and even in surprising places you'll find something that, well I'll find something that just stands out to me as just a little bit strange or a, a, a nice colour or just um, interesting, funny, anything like that. So. And I just grab things and not thinking about what it's going to be used for really ever, you know, unless I, and I've never really had a full idea of going out and shopping for a costume for a character, I've never done that. And then within the, uh, the performance part, I'll sit there, I'll sort of look at all the bits of uh, costume and props around the place and start with one piece, put one on, grab another one, put that on, see how it sort of vibrates with each other. And at other times I've started with the facial expression um, or a, the saying that they sort of have and then move to the costume part. But it always seems that when I get to the point of jumping in front of the camera to perform, I say just one sort of line over and over or do one gesture or one noise. I'm not quite sure why that is. I think it's, it's just, I, I don't feel comfortable to sort of start considering dialogue, like monologue that's uh, varied and that builds to a climax that's interesting. I'm not in that frame of mind at all. I feel like 
I just want to summarize this character. I keep saying character, but they're very, very shallow. I prefer to even say material, but that's a bit um, hard to separate. The, you know, the background picture is material, you know, the character is material. So let's just say background and character. You know, this thing of background and foreground is really um, fundamental to pretty much all the work I've done with uh, using a green screen, which I forgot to mention is what I perform in front of. Uh, it again allows me to delay the decision making process. Along with the confusion that I feel about um, living, as, I, as a, a child I wanted to be a filmmaker, so this allows me to have a taste of that without being sort of tied to the tradition of filmmaking which is very rigid and very difficult to enter I imagine and relies on so many other people to even make a small um, piece. I, I really like the freedom that I have. Um, at this point in history, you know, I can actually afford to get a decent camera and get the software to make a, a video as long as I want or as, you know, with special effects as sort of um, far reaching uh, as I want, as in the environments that are used because it, it all ends up being a flat picture that People can tell that you know, you're using special effects or, or photograph um, backgrounds, but if you acknowledge that and try not to hide it too much, people enjoy it. You know, they're not, if you're not trying not to fool them, you know, like Hollywood CGI, they love it. You know, it reminds, you of, it reminds a lot of them of their childhood seeing that sort of grade of special effect. And it just also, anytime you sort of acknowledge your own um, hokiness, people like you more. You know, if you, if you just admit that, you know, you can't do it that well, then you sort of on people, you're on people's side straight away. I think the first proper studio I had being Parramatta Artist Studios was the sort of the best thing that happened to me to enable starting an art career. Having that space to go to uh, away from your house just immediately makes things feel a bit more serious that you've got you've got a space that is dedicated to that task there's no other distractions apart from that so I do use a studio or a space I need a physical space big enough to get the camera back far enough to hang a green screen on but I've worked in my own bedroom and in that case where you don't have much space to get the camera back you just do a bus shot you know you just you just change the the way you uh, frame the shot. You could just do, you know, you only need this much really to sort of put that figure in any, any place that you can get a photo of or create a, create a landscape out of computer generated imagery. Once I sort of gather the materials, then I'm just in a small room with a computer for months. So that's, that's really the studio for me is the computer because I rely on it for the compilation of all the parts to create the video, um, the, the editing, the special effects and the sound. So really the computer is, is my office, uh, is my, my studio.